Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, trying to make this video for the second time because my first time was interrupted with a screaming child. Um, Alright, so in the last video that I made, um, before the one that was interrupted by my screaming child, I did a video on limits at infinity for rational functions. So I'm going to call these radical functions, uh, which I don't know is entirely true. I've heard them called quasi-irrational functions. Um, but basically, I'm just saying that these have a radical in them, therefore, um, we have to sort of treat these differently than rational functions. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at this guy. One of the things we have to remember, anytime we're evaluating a limit at infinity for uh, something with a root in it, we have to consider plus infinity, which I have here. This is positive infinity, and then on the next page, I'm going to actually look at negative infinity. So if you're asked to find the horizontal asymptotes of one of these guys, basically what this means is that there are two horizontal asymptotes. So as something as it goes to a positive infinity and approaches something, as it approaches to negative infinity and approaches something. So that's possible. All right, we also have to remember that generally when we're doing these things, we're going to divide by the highest power in the denominator. So in this case, it's going to be x. If we're dividing by x, the top part, we have to bring it inside the square root. So what you should remember is that for as x approaches positive infinity, x is equal to the square root of x squared underneath that root sign. The other situation we have is what we're going to deal with on the next page, which is as x approaches negative infinity, x is equal to negative square root of x squared. So anything underneath, basically what that means is, if you have positive infinity and you have a root, when we go to evaluate that, you take the plus of the root. If you have a negative infinity and you have a root, when you go to evaluate it, you take the negative of the root. So let's see what that looks like when we actually do it. So, let's go ahead and give this a shot. Now, so we have, we're going to divide by the highest power in the denominator, which is, of course, uh, x. So divide everything by x. So sometimes you might see people write it like this. So you see them rewrite this step and say 1 over x on this side, and then 1 over x on that side. So that's kind of annoying, but it is what it is, right? Like, you're just dividing the top and bottom by, you know, x, so you can multiply by 1 over x, but a lot of times you'll see that. And then this guy turns into... So in order to bring this underneath the root sign, we have to change it to x squared when we bring it underneath the root sign. So, so again, sometimes you'll see this guy now written as, and I'm just going to bring it out to the front of this guy so it becomes 1 over square root of x squared. So a lot of times you'll see some professors or calculus teachers write it like this. And that emphasizes to your teacher that you completely understand what's going on with this stuff. And this one becomes 1 over x and this is negative x over x plus 5 over x. So now essentially what we have is we bring this inside, since we have uh, the root there like this, we can sort of bring it inside x squared plus 5, and this is all divided by x squared. So now that it's, it's x outside, it's x squared, and then 7 over x, and all over, I'm not going to reduce it down, I'll reduce it all in one step, even though I can reduce the stuff. Um, so generally, guys, uh, my students probably go directly from here all the way to this step. I certainly don't have a problem with that. I mean, we all know where this is going. So, like, uh, again, based on what your teacher's expectations are, he'll probably tell you or she'll probably tell you that, um, you know, if she wants it this way, then that's the way she wants you to write it. And that's what you have to do to get full marks. So just ask her about what, her, what uh, their expectations are and then... That's it. Go with whatever they do. But for me, I like to get straight to the point. So I got the square root of this guy. So that's going to be 1 plus 5 over x squared plus 7 over x. That should be inside here. And then negative 1 plus 5 over x. So now I can kind of evaluate. I keep doing that, changing it to infinity to 0. So what I can do is I'm evaluate my limit here put my infinity into each of these. So what ends up happening is I get root 1 plus 0 plus 0. Anything with an x left in the bottom is 0. 
minus 1 plus 0. And then I can take the square root of 1, which is, of course, just 1. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Oh. Keep doing that, too. All right, so there it is. So the horizontal asymptote of this guy, the HA, is y is equal to negative 1. So if we actually looked at this graph, that's what we'd see. All right, so let's go ahead now and try the other limit, just see how it differs. So I'm going to kind of jump to the chase with this one a little bit. And I'm just going to divide the top and bottom by my highest powers. So remembering that when I divide here, I have to make sure that I divide by x squared. And because this is negative infinity, I can go ahead right away and put a negative in front of that. So I have x squared over x squared plus 5 over x squared plus 7 over x. I'll divide it by negative 5, negative x over x plus 5 over x. And remember, the reason why this is, is that as x goes to negative infinity, x is equal to the negative root of x squared. All right? So... What we can go ahead and do now is simplify. So am I missing a 5? No, that's, that's not. That's right. So then I have x goes to negative infinity. So I get negative 1, negative root 1 plus, and then it's 5 over x squared plus 7 over x all over negative 1 plus 5 over x. Then I'll evaluate. So I got negative 1 plus 0 plus 0 all over negative 1 plus 0. And then all I have to do is go ahead and just evaluate this. So I have square root of 1 is 1, negative. So negative over negative is a positive 1. So for this guy, I have a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 1. So guys, I hope this kind of explains to you what you have to do when it, when it comes to this. So again, the rule is just as x goes to negative infinity, take the negative root. As x goes to positive infinity, take the plus root. So I really hope this helps you guys in your quest to figure out all this limit stuff. Thank you for watching, and I got a couple of other videos with a few higher examples, so check those out if you're still having questions, and thank you very much. Thanks for watching.